Hello everyone, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, we would be discussing one of the great marvels of science, which is how China converted the Gobi Desert into a forest. Why did China even need to make the Gobi Desert a forest in the first place? This was because China is right next to the Gobi Desert, and the desert was beginning to encroach into Chinese territory, hence reducing the availability of land and forcing people to abandon their homes. In 1978, China embarked on a project to inhibit the growth of the desert and restore the forests in the north, northeast, and northwest regions of China. Hence, the project was named the Three North Shelter Forest Program. It was to be in operation until 2050. They got many volunteer farmers to work on the project. Today, the project has proved successful. According to the Chinese Academy of Sciences, 336,200 square kilometers of land have been recovered from the desert, and over 8 million windbreak trees have been planted. These trees are used to control the winds hence preventing sandstorms, which are a common occurrence in deserts. They also help to reduce erosion. Before we go on, let's get to know a few things about the Gobi Desert. The Gobi Desert got to be big through desertification, most rapidly, on the southern edge of China. This has taken over about 3,600 km2, 1,390 sq mi, of grassland yearly. Sandstorms otherwise known as dust storms have also increased in frequency between 1996 and 2016. The Chinese agricultural economy has suffered severely as a result of this. The good news is that in recent times, desertification has been slowed down and even completely reversed in some areas. As a result, the northern and eastern boundaries between desert and grassland are constantly changing. Some may want to attribute this change to climate conditions. Truly, before the growing season, the rate of evapotranspiration and plant growth is affected positively. However, I would like to attribute this change to the efforts made by the Chinese people to turn this desert into a great forest. Just like many other deserts across the world, the expansion of the Gobi Desert can be traced back to human activities. These activities include deforestation, overgrazing, as well as depletion of water resources. There is also a place for climate change. As time went on, China began to make and try various plans to slow down or even stop the expansion of the desert. The good news is that they have met with some success. One of these plans and programs is the Three North Shelter Forest Program, or Green Great Wall. This project was a Chinese government tree planting project that started in 1978 and is set to continue through 2050. The goal of the program is simple. The project aims to reverse desertification by planting fast-growing trees like aspen on some 36.5 million hectares. The 36.5 million hectares span some 551 counties in 12 provinces of northern China. We will take a deeper look into the Three North Shelter Forest Program soon. In more recent times, precisely in 2016, researchers from China's Chongqing Jiakong University claim to have developed a novel technology that is capable of converting a desert to arable land. Let me share a rather biased fact with you. The idea of converting deserts into farmlands seems beneficial to agriculture the economy, reforestation, and natural resource management on the surface. But the impact of converting desert and grassland to arable land could also have a large-scale repercussion on the Earth's climate, biodiversity, and overall ecological balance. Nonetheless, the pros outweigh the cons, and of course, we can't possibly get rid of all the desserts. Let's have a better look at China's model. This technology that was developed by the researchers at Chongqing Jiatong University involves a paste made from plant cellulose. This paste can greatly improve the ability of desert sands to hold water, minerals, air, microbes, and nutrients. These are the essential things required for plant growth. This paste was first applied in the Ulaanbaatar Desert in the Mongolian Autonomous Region, not far away from the Gobi Desert. The resulting effect was that the plot was transformed into fertile cropland. This land was now capable of producing tomatoes, rice, watermelon, sunflowers, and corn. Another mind-blowing part is that the project is cost-effective. One more mind-blowing part, the plants from the transformed land produced higher crop yields when compared to the same plants grown on arable soil with the same water supply. The fertilizer needed and used was also lower. The Free North Shelter Forest Program in China. This was a rather ambitious project when it was launched in 1978. It is popularly known as the Free North Shelter Forest Program and is often referred to as the Free North Shelter Belt Program or Great Green Wall. The program had one goal, 
and a big one at that. The goal of this program is to stop the spread of the Gobi Desert, and as a follow-up initiate reforestation projects in the Northeast, North, and Northwest regions. Between 1978 and now, the program has been ongoing, and we can say that the program has effectively curbed the expansion of desertification. This project has also helped to prevent sandstorms and soil erosion, conserve water and soil, and safeguard agriculture in the region. The program is still very much ongoing, and has a completion date of 2050. The aim is that by the year 2050, over 35 million hectares, about 87 million acres, of the Gobi Desert would have been converted successfully into a forest. It is a quite ambitious project, and the Chinese government has called it the biggest reforestation initiative. So far, over 7.8 million hectares of windbreak trees have been planted. Over 336,000 square kilometers of desertification have been reversed. Over 10 million hectares of grassland have been restored, and over 10 million hectares of grasslands have been protected. These are not mere estimates but statistics from the Chinese Academy of Science. In support of the above statistics, satellite images from NASA show that forest cover has actually increased in China over the last 20 years. Notwithstanding the initial problems, China has continued the world's largest deforestation project, and this has resulted in some positive outcomes. Since the commencement of the project, the northern region has witnessed a growth in green cover from 5% to 13.5% and vast sections of the Gobi Desert are now blooming with healthy vegetation, fertile soil, and increased rainfall. You might be wondering about the benefits of this project. You should know that more green cover could mean increased food security, more rainfall, higher yield, decreased soil erosion, and less land degradation. Because of the good benefits and ongoing success of this project, there are many researchers working on a forestation technology and projects. Some of the benefits that the project is boosting are food security, as we know that food insecurity is a serious global issue at present. The UN tells us that about 750 million people are currently facing high or extreme levels of food insecurity. With enough arable land, there is the possibility that the agriculture sector could expand enough to end food insecurity. The Gobi Desert Afforestation will make available millions of hectares of arable lands. Also, lesser deserts could mean more land would be available for forest animals and plant species. This will lead to an increase in biodiversity. This helps to bring about ecological balance. Let's also see the proposed negative impacts. Please note that the Gobi Desert is just one of the many deserts in the world, and turning it into arable land will not bring the effects that I'm about to tell you. These effects are only possible if all the deserts in the world are gotten rid of. Trust me when I tell you that it is near impossible. On the other hand, deserts play a key role in regulating the Earth's temperature, and their dry condition promotes the concentration and formation of useful minerals such as potassium, borate, gypsum, nitrate, etc. If all the deserts on our planet disappear, then this would likely adversely affect the Earth's climate. And there might be a question about the continued availability of various minerals. Let's leave out the vast array of plant and animal species that may not survive without deserts. There are also over 1 billion humans who have made dry lands their home, and they are well adapted to the desert lifestyle. Such communities would not feel the same in the absence of dry lands, and they would need to adapt to new ways of life, which might take a while. Afforestation also increases the rate of rainfall. This is a relief to some parts of the world, but could bring about flooding in other parts, if not well handled. In conclusion, desert greening is a tough task, but the experiments conducted in China, especially with the Gobi Desert, have brought revival and hope for a healthy and resourceful Earth. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, there's plenty where that came from. Simply subscribe to our channel and hit the bell so you'll be notified whenever we post a new video.